touchdowns, which he got in Doha 2022. His opponent, Di Veroli, took 45th at the World Cup in Buenos Aires, 65th at the Grand Prix in Budapest, 11th at the World Cup in Heidenheim. That's a nice result. 38th at the Grand Prix in Doha, 39th at the World Cup in Vancouver, 68th at the World Cup in Bern. And he has one World Cup silver, which he got in Heidenheim in 2019. Heidenheim is considered the biggest tournament of, of the year, largest tournament. And he has one Grand, Grand Prix bronze in Doha in 2022. I'm in a safe spot here in the announcing booth, but earlier today in the 64, I happened to be standing right next to the piece when Vismara won his first bout, and he came running off the piece right at me, I think just to celebrate, and I really thought he was going to run me over. Quite exciting for him, not so much for me. So we are just 10 seconds away from both fencers getting a P yellow card for unwillingness to fence. Fencers have to score a touch within 60 seconds or they get that, and it looks like it's about to happen. Hi. Referee calls halt, gives a P yellow card to each fencer. Yellow, yellow. Now, if this were to happen again for another 60 seconds in the same bout, they would get a P red card. And if it were to go to the third time, they'd get a P black card. And the fencer leading at that time would be the winner. If the score is tied, it's the fencer who came into the competition with the higher seed who would be declared the winner. getting closer to that P red card, but it looks like someone's about to take a chance here, score a touch. Uh, and there it is. Wow. Vismara with the attack. Double. So they have another 60 seconds. I see. What? So Vismara with the counterattack takes the lead at 2-1. And we're safe in the first period. No more P cards. And that was a beauty to the toe. Watch this. Wow. Feels great for the fencer who scored it. Feels horrible for, for the fencer who took it. Okay. Looks like we're going to go to the break. 3 1 for. Is Mara and unwillingness to fence, non combativity, once known as passivity. Where did this come from? It was at the 2001 World Championship in Nîmes 
We're in the finals of the men. It was between Hungary, who had three fencers ranked in the top 16 against Estonia, who had Kaburma, only one, and two others who were lower ranked, yet they were in the gold medal match. And what they decided to do with the two fencers, Lloyd and Vat, who were not uh, the high ranked fencers, they said they're not going to fence. They're just going to step back and just try to keep the score low so Kaburma on his own could try to win the world championship. Great tactic. It's been used before. And unfortunately, the Hungarians took the bait. And when uh, Lloyd, the first fencer, dropped his arm and took two steps back, I think it was Kovac of Hungary did the same. So it sounds like pretty funny, but it wasn't funny because at the time, fencing was a bubble sport in the Olympics. They were at risk of being eliminated in the next quad. And that night, the uh, then head of the International Olympic Committee, Jacques Roga, was there to watch the finals, and he was being hosted by uh, Rene Rock, the president of the Inter International Fencing Federation, to show Roga why fencing was so exciting. Unfortunately, at that time, it was the worst situation possible. Uh, and that was the birth of the what is now known as unwillingness to fence, so that debacle can never happen again. And I want to congratulate the FIE for having really fixed it, because I was on the Rules Commission back then when it was thrown in our lap, and now they seem to have got it to the perfect spot. And it's 4-1 now for Vismara. Ale. Vizmar has been on a roll all day today. And Divarol has got to make something happen here soon. He's pushing, which he has no option but to do that down four touches. There he goes. Nice attack. Faint disengage to the shoulder. Vizmara scored one on the toe. Do you think he's going to try it again? Or maybe even faint there, make Divaroli think about it? Pushing. There's more back to the two meter zone near the end of the piece. He's running out of options. Uh, and that's the risk three. you take when you get pushed wow. to the back at the end of the piece like that. You can't retreat. You have to guess what your opponent's going to do. If, and if you guess curveball and your opponent throws fastball, you're dead. And that's what, what happened there. Is Mara tying his shoes? The sneaker. Let's look for him to push a little bit there. He seated ground a little too, too easily there. Well, he decided to do the opposite tactic, which made sense because the other one didn't work when he got pushed too easily. But he sort of attack from out of distance without setting it up and Divarola was waiting there for a pretty easy repost. And all of a sudden, 5-1 is 5-4. Wow, how the momentum changed quickly. Again with the t fake to the toe by Vismara. Clearly the third touch against him affected him. Attack in the middle and simple counterattack by Divaroli. After that third touch at the end of the piece by Vismara, he's been pushing, but he, he's really not been setting it up and Divaroli picked him off twice. So now at 5-1 for Vismara, Divaroli had to push, had to take some risks. 
And now it's changed so drastically that Di Veroli has the option to push if he chooses or sit back. And he chose to sit back there and scored an easy double. So the strategy really changes very quickly based on who's in the lead. Because now Vismar has to take a few more risks and push. So there's been a lot of action here in the second period. And one has to ask, uh, what were the fencers thinking when they didn't try to score a touch for that minute and took the P yellow cards? Was there a plan? Was it just a feeling out process? Well, one thing is for sure, it doesn't look like it's going to happen a second time based on how this period's gone. Okay. So, quite a turnaround here with Divaroli scoring seven of the last eight touches. He was down 5-1. Quite a turnaround. And it looks to me that Vismara, uh, he can't sit back anymore. He has to push. He has to push uh, Divaroli down to the end of the piece, although Divaroli's not seeding ground very much. I would say that he has to also try some second intention actions. He's tried single intention actions and he's gotten hit pretty easily. So he's gonna have to try to draw Divaroli out, which he's been unable to do so far once Divaroli was able to turn the bout around. A lot of times with a lot of countries, most countries probably, when you have a battle of country mates, that the rule is just the coaches don't coach because it only brings bad will. Here we go for the third and final period. Divaroli on a 7-1 run. Well, Vismara tried there just a single intention beat attack, but Divaroli was e easily able to double it out. So he's had two doubles already since he took the lead. If he's able to do that, that's a huge advantage. Again with the feint to the toe. Another one, he's setting it up. He scored one beauty early. Er. So there Divaroli took a risk, first one since he's had the lead, and it paid off because he provoked Vismara into just making a counterattack. So it's an offensive double as a defensive double, and it counts the same. I think the referee Vanguard. called halt because Vismara's knee hit the ground. That could be the only reason that I saw. Maybe he felt that he was out of balance. Look for Vismara to make a feint to the toe and then maybe finish with an attack to the high line. He's got to try something. So with a two-touch lead here, Divaroli really doesn't have to do anything. If he were to just sit back and they get P red cards. Aye. As 
looks like just happened. He's got a two-touch lead, so it's to his advantage. Vanguard. And they both get a touch on a red card. Each fencer gets a point. So it's 11-9. Hey, so if they were to go 60 seconds without a touch, Divaroli would, would be the winner. And you know that Bismar is not going to let that happen. Okay, so there's a nice attack. Again, a single intention action he scored for the first time. Let's watch. Paint attack to the back. Looks like actually he hit on the remise under the, under the arm. A touch has to be scored before time runs out here because that touch was scored with more than a minute left. So Vismara has to push here. Oh, got caught napping there. That's a huge touch for Divaroli because now Vismara has got 45 seconds and he has, he has no option but to take some risk here, take a chance. Push. Wow, Divaroli saw an opening, thought he was going to surprise him. It was a good tactic if it works, and this time he didn't execute. And oh, he missed. He went flat. He was clearly ahead, and his po he angled his blade in such a way downward that the point didn't hit, and it's within one touch. Good idea. This didn't work. Divarelli scores a beautiful touch there. He's up again by two with 30 seconds to go. Does he try to surprise Vismara on his first step and flesh into him? Or he did! He did it. Last time it didn't work, this time it did. And now he's one away from the gold medal bout. Did it again. And there's your winner. David Devaroli of Italy beating his countrymate Federico Vismara into the gold medal match. He goes.